Recording sound, best options for recording lectures with music. I pulled an M4A from iTunes and just dragged and dropped it into VoiceThread. And this is what happened. We now have a music slide. So when I look at this slide, I click content to get there. I now have my music. And if I wanna leave a comment, let's say right here, I record my voice for my students. I stop recording and it uploads. Here. I... And that little notch is right here in the song. It's also right here at the beginning. So as a student, if I'm watching this slide or listening to this slide, the comment is first. And then when I get to this little dot, which is the comment, it passes it by, but they can click it. Here, I record my voice for my students. And they can listen to it. So that's one way to talk during a song. If I want to share my voice thread lecture, I can add existing activities. I can then go to my external learning tools and find voice thread. Once I'm there, it looks like it's already there, but we've got one more step. I click VoiceThread and I can choose several things. I'm gonna to go to my individual VoiceThread that I created. I'm choosing Bach and here we have it. I share and we're good. Now when students go to the music lecture, they click VoiceThread and they're directed to that slide that we made with the music. Here, I record my voice for my student. Just remember that that voice recording goes before the song, even though they can see where you recorded it. Another way to do this is through Zoom. You can simply start a new meeting. Remember to join with computer audio. You can choose to show yourself in video or not. You need to unmute yourself and then you need to hit record. You can either re record on your local computer or record to the cloud. I like recording to the cloud. And now we're recording. You share your screen. Anything that's up on your computer can be shared. I'm going to share my music right now. So my screen is shared and I can just hit play on this first Goldberg variation. And then I can stop and talk to my students and lecture and then continue. And stop and lecture a little more. When I'm done, I stop sharing. I stop recording. And I'll be emailed when this cloud recording is ready. Once your cloud recording is ready, you can access through Zoom or Oaks. And when you hit play here, it takes you to your second screen. So I've already got it queued up to hear the sound quality. And then I can stop and talk to my students and lecture and then continue. So I'm noticing that my voice is a bit clearer than the music, which is not ideal but it does indeed work. The other cool thing about Zoom is that we have the audio transcript right next to it in this recording, and we can embed this cloud recording in Oaks. To share this on Oaks, I can do one of two things. First thing I can do is hit share, make sure that this is public, that there's no password protection, and then I can copy the sharing information to the clipboard. Or if I already know that, I can just copy my shareable link, go to Oaks, add a new, link, copy that URL, give it a title, create, and here it lives. A final option is Screencastify, which is an add-on from Google. What's cool about Screencastify, you'll watch my mouse go to the top right. When I click this, you'll see my desktop is being recorded. This same button is how I turn it on to record. So if I show you this little presentation, Screencastify again is a Google add-on and you literally Google, Google add-ons or Chrome web store, 
You search the store for Screencastify. It easily records and auto saves to your Google Drive, which is fantastic. It creates a file in your drive. So if I go to drive.google.com and I'll know I'm in my CFC drive when I see my little CFC headshot in the top right hand corner, you'll notice in my drive, I have a Screencastify file. And this is where I make all of my tutorials and this is where all of them live. Screencastify is free and you can get either 50 free videos at five minutes long each or you can pay $29.99 for a year of unlimited videos with as long of a timestamp as you'd like. When I'm finished with my Screencastify recording, once I hit this little stop button, it goes into my drive. So now I'm using Screencastify to play music and pretend like I'm lecturing. So I'm making this full screen. Let's listen to the sound. And then I can stop, I can talk, I can fast forward it a little, play. So the true test will be, what does this video sound like as you're listening to this tutorial? Because that's what you get with Screencastify. To embed this into Oaks, I find my video. I've titled it Screencastify Soundcheck. I hit share. I want to make sure that this is a public link so that anyone on the internet can view it if they have it. If this by default is private, you just click on it to change. Anyone with the link can view. You copy the link, you hit done, you go to your music lecture, you add a link. You want to open this one as an external resource because it can sometimes be a little fussy if you don't check that. Hit create. And now when students go to watch this video, if they click out, they can access it. In the end, the question is, what sound quality best suits your needs as an instructor? And once you choose that one, pick it, go with it every time, and that will make students' lives so much easier.